A recent uptick in carjackings has exposed some seriously disturbing trends of crime involving children. Last week, that seven-year-old we just spoke about, seven-year-old child was shot and killed in the McDonald's drive through but now an 18-year-old is being charged in connection to that crime. That's right, Tudor. We're going to talk about this with our panel today. We have with us attorney and Democrat strategist Kelly Hyman, CEO and founder of the Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo, and dean of the School of Business at Liberty University, Dave Brad. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here today. And uh, Kelly, I want to start with you today because here's something that I know is true. Uh, my entire life, every major city in America, be it Chicago or Baltimore or Cleveland, or Detroit, and, and the list goes on. Every single major city in America has Democrat mayors and Democrat city councils, and yet the violence in Chicago is infamous, not just here in this country, but around the world. Uh, Detroit, according to recent statistics, uh, one of the most dangerous cities in America. The same is true in Cleveland and elsewhere. Why is it that these cities are so dangerous? Why is it that Democrat policies just haven't come through to make Chicago safer, to make Cleveland safer, to make Detroit safer? What's What's the challenge? What's the problem? Foremost, my thoughts and prayers go to the family that lost their seven-year-old child. Um, it's a horrible way, and my thoughts are with them. But I think we need to talk about gun safety. I think that is key. I think that is a national um, issue, whether you live in Chicago, whether you live in New York, whether you live in California. And I think we need to do something about it and bring about reform. And what would you suggest then? Uh, if I might, because I want to ask you about gun safety. These are cities, Chicago, some of the strongest gun control laws in America. Same in Washington, D.C., some of the strongest gun control laws in America, and yet those are two of the most violent, deadly places anywhere in America. What, what are these gun safety laws? I, I think it's important. This should be bipartisan in regards to gun safety. I think there needs to be some guidelines and so people don't um, get through the loopholes and make sure that there's proper background checks and proper procedures in, in place so that we make sure that young kids do not have guns and that their people are safe. I want to go to Melissa with this question because as we're seeing, we saw just a few weeks ago, we got the footage of Adam Toledo. He is a 13-year-old with a gun. This was a situation where we believe there was a gang involved. Again, Chicago has the strictest, some of the strictest gun laws in the nation. Is there something we're missing here? Because we've talked about police being the problem. We've talked about guns being the problem. But there seems to be a culture of crime in these neighborhoods. What can we do to get to the heart of the issue, Melissa? One of the things that needs to happen, I live in Manhattan, is, is that criminals have to be kept behind bars. There's a no bail in New York City right now. So how does that help the problem that doesn't help the problem? If criminals want to get guns, they're going to find a way to get guns, whether they're 13, 16, 18, or you know, 36 years old. The problem is that when someone gets arrested, at least right here in New York City right now, they are left out on no bail to do what? To could probably commit another crime. There's no deterrent to go out and not commit another crime if, in fact, people know that they're going to get out right away is on no bail. And of course, they're not going to show up for court if they're not posting bail either. So yes, maybe we do need stricter gun laws, but I don't think that that alone is going to solve the problem. Even if Democrats and Republicans get together, you have to have people convicted for these crimes. If they don't get convicted and they get back on the streets again, you're going to continue to have this problem. Dave, I'll bring this one to you because uh, let's start with the, with the basic fact when it comes to gun control and gun laws. An 18-year-old cannot legally possess a handgun anywhere in America, period. An 18-year-old cannot possess a handgun anywhere in America, not out in public. So that's already illegal. I'm yep. pretty sure shooting people at the drive through at McDonald's is illegal, um, not allowed uh, in every state in America. So the idea that somehow we change gun laws and gun safety laws and, and mm -hmm. loopholes, I've heard all of this before, but the bottom yep. line doesn't change. Whether it's Chicago or Cleveland or Detroit or Baltimore or Miami, and I can go around the country, Democrat-controlled cities are the most dangerous places in America. And the violence and the gun crimes are predominantly in those counties in America. The rest of America is pretty safe. What say you? Yeah, uh, we have systemic destruction of the Judeo-Christian tradition and systemic destruction of the American family. As our good public policy uh, expert Milton Friedman uh, said quite correctly, 
if you're going to solve a po policy problem, it helps to aim at the target. The target that we're all talking around is the problem of good and evil. When you take the study of good and evil out of K-12 education, and when the American family has been decimated, uh, and the church is on the decline, uh, and then you tell me, oh, wow, shocker, we have a problem uh, with the bad behavior, there is no shocker. All of it adds up perfectly, and so we need to get back. Uh, it, a long time ago, we chose the family as the basic unit of uh, the building block for Western Civ, right? That was the Jewish model over the Greek model of the city-state. That choice served us very well. And then going back to Plato's Republic, uh, we learned about the importance of studying what does it mean to be good. Uh, that is the question of Western Civ, it is no longer even asked. And when you ask people, what is it to be good? They give some tautology like, it's good to be good. So the, the answer is very simple. We need to get serious again as a culture, right? Uh, the Chinese, uh, the, the Buddhists, uh, the rest of the world, the Israelis, it's, they still have cultures intact. And uh, along with those comes some semblance of ethics. Our, ours has been deconstructed and lays in tatters. Well, Dave is bringing up bad behavior, so I want to go to our next story and get Kelly's take on this, because are we calling out bad behavior when we see it, and are the people in charge doing enough? I want to turn to Michigan, where State Representative Joel Jones is in hot water for a DUI arrest earlier this month. Now he could be in more trouble because a new video is showing him belligerent toward police. He's got, he's screaming out a blatant abuse of power. He says when he's arrested for a DUI where he's twice the legal limit, he has a woman who is blacking out and vomiting in his car. They're both in some state of undress and the police are arresting him. He says, I am in control of your budget and then calls out and says, I want your bad badge numbers. I'm calling Gretchen, referring to the governor of Michigan. Now, no one in Michigan, none of the Michigan officials, government officials, have called this out. We have not heard a statement from Governor Whitmer at this point. Does this need to happen when you have somebody who is abusing power in such a blatant way? Do we need our top officials to come out and say, hey, there's going to be an investigation done? Well, in the in the law, people are innocent till proven guilty. Now, his Jones attorneys has stated, I only saw part of the video, and I didn't see this in the video, that he was tasered twice, that he was also pepper sprayed as well. But people should not use their power in a bad way or abuse the power. And if someone is convicted of driving under the influence, then the law should punish them accordingly to the law. We have the video. Let's play that so you can see it, and then I'll let you respond to it. Okay. I can't do that. Oh, the, the only re the only reason the only don't, don't I'm, 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 I'm tensing up. Oh, don't get up. <laughs> Stop. It's not gonna be good for you. I'm telling Stop. you. Stop. I run your budget, bro. I'm, when I call Gretchen, I need your IDs and badge numbers and everything. I told you already. Yep. So I don't know if you could hear him say, "I run your budget, your budget, bro." I'm gonna call Gretchen. That is in in my i mean watching that video regardless of what happened when you have police arresting you and you are in a state where you have a, an intoxication level above the legal limit don't you think that there should be somebody holding him accountable and saying at least we're going to investigate this man who is an elected official or my question is do elected officials live above the law well no one likes to think elected officials are, are, you know are above the law um, you know, he as uh, if he's convicted of the crime of the crime, then absolutely he should do the punishment. But I think we have to wait and see. And there, if my understanding is there is going to be an investigation into the DUI and, and the facts of the case and figure out what happens when the investigation is done. Uh, here's my concern as I watch this video. Um, listen. Uh, people have done dumb things. The guy's 26 years old. He was elected to the state house when he was just 21 years of age. And if this had been his one transgression, throw yourself on the mercy of the people, on the mercy of the people you represent, and so on and so forth. But it's not the first time. It's the second time he's been arrested since he was elected at the age of 21. He was elected, uh, arrested when he was 23 for open intoxication uh, substances in his vehicle. 
Uh, he was super drunk, 0.18, which is more than double, which is considered super drunk in Michigan, more than double the legal limit, and the list goes on. Um, there's got to be more than censure. Uh, the average citizen in Michigan and across the country would face real penalties. In Utah, that would be more than three times the legal limit to operate a motor vehicle. And so, uh, Melissa, what say you? What should Governor Whitmer say? This is a Democrat. He's a young man from Inkster. Yes, he made a mistake, but... You know, he he compounded the injury, if you will, by the tussling with the officers and then being tased and then throwing out Gretchen Whitmer's name and the and the guy that runs the Michigan State Police, another name that he threw out and so on and so forth. And it's a second time um, being involved with a, an arrest involving alcohol. You have to ask, is there a bigger problem? Well, first of all, people say a lot of things when they're drunk that they don't wouldn't normally say. So that's number one. But number two is. There's no excuse in 2021 for someone not to call an Uber or a Lyft or some kind of vehicle to take them around. I mean, this isn't like 25 years ago when nobody even knew what Uber was or how to get around and you had to you know, go in a carpool and have one designated driver. There's no excuse. You put your own life at risk when you drive, when you're intoxicated, even if you only have one drink, let alone his blood alcohol. And second of all, you put other people's lives at risk. So I have no mercy for people that drive drunk. I think it's dangerous. Yes, they'll go through the court proceedings, whatever they were. As far as I'm calling on the governor, I think it's best for her to stay out of it. You know, she's coming up for re-election in 2022. There's talk that Ron DeSantis uh, uh, will will run, or McDaniels, I'm sorry, will run against her. I don't know if that's true or not, or she's going to continue to be the head of, of the Republican National Committee. But the fact is that she's at risk of not getting re-elected. People are not happy with her to begin with because of the fact that they've had such strict COVID lockdowns. And supposedly she went traveling in the last year and she was telling other people not to travel so i think she's literally not well liked so him spitting that out really her best her best action towards this is to not get involved so dave i want to bounce off of what melissa is saying because governor whitmer has come out multiple times and said there's sexism uh, it's a big problem in Lansing that men get away with things because they are elected officials. Is this hypocritical now if she doesn't come out and say, hey, this guy cannot get away with this just because he's an elected official? This was not just drunk driving. Like I said, there was a woman in the car intoxicated, blacking out, and in a state of undress. The whole situation is very ugly. Does the governor really have no responsibility to make a comment? Oh, there's a huge responsibility here on, on any elected official to come out and say something. But unfortunately, the Republican leadership is not raising the ante and putting pressure. The Democrats come out all in, right? When they go all in, they go all in. They get the full media force if a Republican uh, falls in the ditch, which we do, too. Uh, we hear about it. and we, we have to step down. The Democrats get, you know, you can sleep with a Chinese spy and nothing happens to you. You're still on the Intelligence Committee. And so again, this goes back to, you know, we didn't, uh, we need a new contract with America on morality that both parties sign up. If you cross these lines, you're out. Uh, Alan Bloom in his famous book, Closing of the American Mind opened up his first sentence. The only moral absolute that exists these days is that there are no moral absolutes. And so that is where we find ourselves. And now you're just seeing the decay in front of you every day on the news. I, I want to ask Kelly one quick question. I know we're running a little fat here, but I want to run. There was one other really important fact about this stop that we haven't mentioned, I don't think. That was the loaded handgun in the cup holder of the guy that was .18 who had tumbled out of the car half undressed along with the woman half undressed. When it comes to common sense gun laws, do you think this Democrat lawmaker should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law for having a handgun illegally because he's intoxicated um, in a vehicle exposed illegally, how do you think that should be handled? Well, I, I think that's up to the prosecutions to investigate that. And if they believe under the law of the state that they can prove the elements of the crime, then absolutely they should. I would note that my understanding is he is an acceler um, a police officer um, in some capacity. Uh, maybe it's, He cannot it's, be uh, drunk. He cannot be drunk in possession of a handgun. State law. Every every state in America, I think, but but I appreciate it, and and I thank the panel for being here today. Greatly appreciate all of you, Dave, Kelly, Melissa.